Susio Talk. Welcome. What's going on with you guys? Susio Talk here to talk to you today. It's been a while. It's been almost almost going to be a month here if I let it go another week. So uh, a lot of shit going on in my life. Been traveling, been down in Palm Springs again, personal chefing. Uh, I've realized that the personal chef business is not for me, uh, although it is a good way to make money, uh, enough money to be able to fund the travels and the podcasts and all things like that. Uh, but I am looking for a sponsor. So if anybody out there knows a company that's looking for somebody to showcase their product um, for a small fee, hit your boy up. All right. Also, I started a hotline. Okay. Just so you know, sociotalk.com is the website. You can check out the merch there, T-shirts, uh, all the shit. Shout out to uh, the the small few people who did order things off of the internet. They ordered some, uh, some shirts, ordered some hoodies. Uh, it's a sustainable company called Printful. They're making the shirts and the hoodies and all that shit to order. So I don't have a bunch of back stock of shit, of supplies that are not necessary. So they make the shit to order, highly sustainable, uh, or at least trying to be, um, if anybody else has seen that shit on Cobalt, I mean, the fact is we use that shit. It's in everything, phones, computers. And uh, just recently on a podcast, the gentleman was talking about it. And uh, he's basically does research on modern day slavery. So looking forward to uh, trying to read that book. But um, trying to read the book, <laughs> reading the book, but also doing a little bit more research into this because, you know, I do a podcast. Is a podcast sustainable or is all these lithium ion batteries because they need cobalt going to be the death of us? Um, so in the hierarchy of technology, you know, if you can listen to a podcast, if you have a phone, you're on the top of that chain. Okay. So, nevertheless, the number for the hotline is down below. I got a little scrolling thing there. So, sociotalk.com. Then we got the phone number, 510-463-1145. All right. That is the number. Hit it up. Uh, it's meant to, if you want to shout out restaurants, if you want to uh, shout out friends in the industry, if you want to, if you have a, a something that's going on in the industry in a restaurant that we should all know about, uh, it's a free platform. Now, don't be out here trying to lie, all right? Because that's not what this is about. The, this is about the truth, right? It's about getting the truth out. So, um, I would like it to be a positive uh, platform. I get that things in the industry are not correct at this time there's a lot of uh, controversy with how people get treated and all this but i want to make sure that uh if you do go on there you are courteous respectful uh because i will not tolerate anything less all right and the number the number there is i'm going to wait till it actually scrolls down the screen so you can see it again sociotalk.com is the website the number is 510 510- Four six three, eleven forty five, five one zero four six three eleven forty five, and that leads me to the next thing that I need to announce is uh, we're I'm starting a live show. Okay, today is Wednesday. On this coming week, this Monday, we will be live. All right, the show will be starting at ten. Ten o'clock should go to about midnight. The idea is to catch all the cooks at the end of the night, cleaning or whatever it may be. You can call in from your restaurant. I will pick up phone calls live uh, to that same number. Okay. So, and then I've shied away from doing interviews that are virtual. 
right? And fucking interviews on, on the internet aren't really, uh, you can't feel the, the energy in the room. I think that that's what makes this podcast special and makes it real. When you're in the room talking to a person, there's no hiding. There's no uh, miscommunication due to technology and things, right? So it's a lot easier to get people to truly express how they're feeling, okay? Um, A while back, I think it was around December 10th, possibly, I put out and I asked people a question about Michelin. Uh, Michelin star restaurants are growing by the number every year. Seems to be a new city. They went to Miami. Uh, You know, now it's here. I won't go into which restaurants. You can go out there and and check out that info on your own. Um, And once I get into the habit of doing these podcasts a little bit more concurrently with what the fuck's going on in the world, then we can sit there and and list the the restaurants that are going to be on. But anyway, I ask people if Michelin is important. Now, do I think Michelin is important? Yes. Uh, regardless of how hierarchy and, you know, hierarchical, hierarchical, uh, classist it may be at times, right? Because it's my understanding that a restaurant needs to charge a certain amount over a certain amount to get three stars, right? So when it comes to that kind of business, I ask myself, you know, what is that right? Is that wrong? Um, Essentially, they made the guide to sell tires. I don't think they thought it was going to be what it is today. Okay? But it turned out to be so. People have killed themselves over Michelin stars. I mean, it's happened throughout history a couple of times. Um, most historically to that restaurant in France, I'm forgetting the name. But... You know, that's the dark side of the award. The good side of the award is it brings people places. It takes people out of the house. It puts asses in seats. It makes sure you have business. It gives you a level of excellence to strive for, right? If there wasn't the Grammys and the Emmys and all these fucking awards, would people make the great art that we spend our time watching Almost all the time, right? We're on our phones, we're on Netflix, watching HBO, we watch series. That's it's a big part of our culture. It's what we talk about. What are you watching on Netflix? What are you doing? Um, or what apps do you have, right? Amazon Prime, HBO, Netflix, all these different things. And so, you know, I have to say that The awards are important, but are they something to die for? I don't necessarily think so. But can you be consumed by passion to the point that you do feel like shit when you fail? 100%. Uh, So we cannot cancel Michelin. We cannot get rid of it. I don't want to get rid of it. Uh, We just need to figure out a, a healthier relationship to have with such a thing with awards and things like that. Cause we can't just be off in ourselves if we, if we think we're going to lose stars, you know what I mean? So as the question, a lot of people answered. All right. Um, and I got, I, I got a lot of good answers here. Okay. So honest opinion of Michelin stars. This was my tweet from Sucio talk. You can follow Sucio talk on uh, Twitter. Check me out. Awards are not the priority, but they are important. They push people to a new level of achievement. When it comes to Michelin, I will not let bad leadership and hospitality ruin this for the rest of us. At the end of the day, Michelin puts asses in seats. Let's not forget that. They feed our families as chefs. They bring people to your door. People hear about you because of Michelin stars, because of these lists. Top 50 world best, uh, opinionated about dining, all those fools. 
they have the right to make a publication and state in their opinion what they think is better or is worse or whatever it is. And if you don't agree with it, well, just don't don't listen to it. Don't pay attention to it. Figure out your own uh, your own judgment. Go to these places on your own, okay, and figure it out for for yourself. All right. So I asked the question, and um, here we go. Honest opinion of Michelin stars. I think they have lot. These are anonymous now. I don't remember who answered me, but uh, I do. I am grateful that people wrote honest opinions and they they didn't come in guns blazing trying to tear down uh the original opinion or point okay here we go ah yo creo i think they have lost their importance over time uh industry changes and public i think i cut that one off there but anyway uh honest opinion of mission stars they're bad for the industry limits creativity okay okay i think that's meaning that the three star level it's seen as though or it seems as though and is seen as though they are trying their best to uphold a standard from which they set when they got the three missile and stars which means it can it can seem like repetition like just doing the same things over and over perfectly well and there's nothing wrong with that I chose Meadowood because they were always pushing the boundary on what was the cuisine. And that third Michelin star, three Michelin star restaurant that at that time when I moved over here in 2013 was the only other one other than the French Laundry. Single Thread did not exist at this time and no other restaurants had three stars. The restaurant on Meadowood got their third, got their three stars, I believe, in 2008. Um and or 2010 i think that's when chef Casto got them and so i chose that because it it seemed like and it was true that they were really pushing the envelope on what the cuisine could be and should be whereas and i'm not not digging any shade over here but the french laundry like they have the techniques that they have built over the years in which they employ on different uh vegetables and uh, products, basically, right? If they do a certain technique with something, they're going to try it with another protein and, and do it in that same similar way. But they are a French restaurant, right? So they are uh, not handcuffed, but they're held to that French standard of what is fine dining French food. Whereas Meadowood, not held by that. Just held by Napa Valley, the place, the time, all right? Honest opinion of Michelin stars. I used to respect them. I feel like the standard for stars in D.C. is lower than New York City, Paris, or California. That's a hot take. I don't really believe that. They're, they're, to me, for a company like Michelin to uphold a standard across the world, is I think the consistency of that is what they go for. Um, and... To say that, you know, you lost respect for them. Hey, you can you can feel that way. I don't think that a three missile and star chef in New York City means more than a three missile and star chef in D.C. It just doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. All right. Uh, part two: Canada, Australia have more original dishes because they don't have the guide. Again, going back to that point where three missile and stars is just upholding shit. And nobody's really pushing the cuisine forward. There's very few restaurants that have three Michelin stars that can do different things. All right. Um, however, Michelin does keep standards high and competition fierce in the kitchen. That You're damn right. When I worked at Meadowood, it was like I was working. I was playing for the Yankees. You're playing for the best team. Every position has the best player. Right. And everyone's trying to be a champion and trying to be better than the next person all the while helping each other. You know, uh, even though when I got there, it was a little bit more cutthroat than that. Um, it wasn't like people would like openly sabotage you and shit, but people, people were, were a little bit dickish. Let's call it. All right. Um, 
that ended. All right. That was a weird pause. Honest opinion of Michelin stars. People wouldn't be talking about them all the all these years if they didn't care. You're damn right. Now I know some people that know some people that are artists, right? Uh, whether it be music or whatever it is. And when I said this point to them, what what they said was, "Look, people that haven't won awards are the ones that are always being like, fuck that award." And it's generally true. So it's hard to sit there and point at something that you haven't had and said that's not worth it or not good enough. Now, if you win the Michelin stars or get the Michelin stars and you don't want them and you say, hey, uh, you know, I don't want this honor, by all means, go ahead. Uh, To this day, it was only Marco Pierre White who's done that, right, I think. And... Even then, like you can't really give them back. Like everybody knows you have you have the stars already, right? Um, but I think that was part of his appeal as well. You know, American stars, in my opinion, are not the same as in Europe. Again, differing opinions, but people weren't being outraged during this, and that's what I loved about it. People being really honest, and I think that that is where the what do you call it? Como se llama? El anonymity, anonymity, anonymous, anonymity, anonymity, anonymity. There you go. I want to make sure that this is a safe place, right? So if people don't want their opinions uh, being, you know, or the person themselves having an opinion and them being crucified for it. I want to make sure that I keep this a safe place. So if there is a hot take or something really offensive said, I will share it. But I'm not in the in the business of uh, of having people, you know, get beat down or something over something they said on the internet. Um, all right, here we go. An American chef to earn a star in Europe is like the U.S. men's soccer team making it to the World Cup. That that was just harsh and mean. Uh, again, I don't believe that a three Michelin star means or a third Michelin star means something uh, better somewhere else. I think it's all the same uh, as far as Michelin goes. And just like Eater, for example, they got a lot of different outlets. They're in a lot of different markets, but it's all overall the same product, right? Because that's the brand that they that they have. Um, but that was a lot of the opinions were that, you know. And a lot of people don't believe that some restaurants should have a star. Uh, I got this message. Boyhan and Yambil has a star. Uh, A bistro. Press just earned a star. Way different food. Press should have at least two. Charter Oak is way better than Bouchon in my opinion. But I'm not saying that there are no American worthy chefs. Dominique, Chris Costow, and David Kinch all would easily earn a star in Europe or beyond. But to compare a bistro to a restaurant like Press makes no sense to me. And that, that I think, is where you, you start having the, the disagreements when it comes to these lines, right? Because if there's a one star that's a little bit more upscale and then there's a one star that's not so upscale, people get upset at that and they're like, well... But if you got to look at what the stars actually means, right? And one star worth a stop, right? Two stars worth a detour, three stars worth a special journey. You know what I mean? If you if you leave it at that, your opinion of what a one star should be is going to be, you know, is going to be different. It's going to not be so, well, I think a one, this other place had this and they were one star and this other place didn't have that. You got to understand every restaurant has a different personality, you know? So, and these restaurants that have one star, congratulations to all of them. uh, It's fucking hard to achieve that. So I think we need to give love to the ones that do. And something that I will say that happened during the Michelin season was um, Chef Jeremy Fox came out and felt like he had to say something because the Rustic Canyon lost a star. As we all know, Andy Dubrava moved on. He's doing um, 
uh, Slow Burn, which is a traveling restaurant. Slow Burn, they just released their 2023 tour, and they're going to start the beginning of their journey at Osito. Osito just got a star. I talked to that chef. I might do a podcast with them. Uh, it's been difficult for me to get podcasts booked and do them just because, you know, the studios in Oakland, I've been in Palm Springs. I've been in San Miguel. San Miguel was fucking off the hook. If you go to Mexico, you got to check out San Miguel. It was a beautiful little town, uh, beautiful architecture. The, the streets is very hilly, uh, cobblestone streets. Stayed at a, a place that was a bull ring. So it was like the house, the Airbnb, and then the bull ring. And we were down there researching some food. But I will say, San Miguel and Mexico City, the food is uh, more fusion now than ever. There's a lot of sushi over there. There's a lot of Japanese influence. There's a lot of pasta and Mexican cuisine now in those cities. So they told me, if you want authentic Mexican cuisine, you got to go to Oaxaca. And there you will find it. All right. Um, <laughs> reference to awards and what they mean. Is Miss Universe really the greatest woman in the universe? Definitely not. Uh, we come on. You gotta. You gotta understand that. That's definitely not the truth. But you know, it's all these awards are subjective. You know, and we shouldn't, unless they're like blatantly cheating. Like what's his name? The the cyclist. Uh, Armstrong, we shouldn't, you know, persecute these people. It's not, th it's not their fault. They got a missile. Well, it is their fault. They got a missile star, but it's not, it doesn't work like that. You know, it shouldn't be a negative thing. Oh, look at this place with their missile star. You know what I mean? So, so Jeremy Fox came out and apologized, um, for Rustic Canyon losing their star. I personally don't think that that man has anything to apologize for. Uh, he has empowered a generation of great chefs. I mean, look at Andy Dubrava and Tiffany Ortiz of Slow Burn. Look at um, Brittany Cassidy, right? All these people that came out of that kitchen that are doing great now, and they got a new chef um, recently. I'm uh, forgetting the name because I didn't do the fucking research. All right. Something that I do is I, I don't do the show because things are not perfect. And what I've realized is that things will never be perfect. But if I can sit down on this chair and let the thoughts flow more frequently than not right because i haven't been putting out that many episodes i feel like we can get the conversation started in a real way um i just posted on instagram as we sat here about this phone number so um what the fuck I'm going to have to erase this comment. Nathan Kryler, you son of a bitch. Told you Jesus was Mexican. That's fucked up, bro. I'm Puerto Rican. You got to learn, B. Can't be writing that shit. I love you, Nathan Kryler. You bought a shirt. But you can't be you can't be talking shit on my Instagram, B. Damn. <laughs> um, so once again, I got that number up. And I'm wondering. Nobody has called it. Nobody has left a message, but we will see what happens with that. Other than that, I will say Monday, live show, starting at 10. We're going to be broadcasting on Facebook. We're going to be on Twitch, all right? And during that time, I'll take live calls. I think since the number ends at 11.45, uh, what I'll do is at 11.45, start taking calls. Um, unless it starts to populate a little more, but I can't. I can't say that the first show is going to be that uh, pop in with viewers, right? Because I haven't been doing this live at all, for that matter. So I'd like to thank all the people who are still listening to the show. Thank uh, the people over at Shared Cultures. Apparently they, they uh, play this over the loudspeaker. Shout out to Sam Pound. She was... Uh, 
uh, Golden State Pickle Works. She was on the show, and she plays this at her place of work. So because she does that, I apologize to her employees on my behalf. I <laughs> I might have an annoying voice, you know. But, um, but yeah, all good things, you know. The idea is going forward that we do the live show, right? I need a video editor to make small shorts or reels from the show, okay? And then we can move on into the future, right? We can take over YouTube. We can do all that because I really want to... Uh, make a show and I don't know if you've seen this show but it's called leave the meter running uh, New York Nico they do it in New York guy gets in a cab he leaves the meter running and he takes the cab driver out to eat to their favorite restaurant all the shit so it's a really inspiring way to do it I definitely you know want to make a show where I do the podcast I go to eat at the restaurant where the chef that I did the podcast with and then chill out with them the next day, whether that's skydiving, doing drugs, driving cars really fast, racing. Um, I've also realized that I need to live more of a wilder life. Uh, the 2021 was a good year for that. Did the road trip. Um, I lived like a nomad, right? And now I'm starting to ease in and trying to get my life together. But... I'd need that excitement again, right? So I need to find a hobby or something to get into. And if you're out there and you're just uh, cooking, definitely make sure that you make time uh, for another activity because it, it, it's going to make you better ultimately. So to all you guys out there, uh, shit's hard right now. You know, there's a war going on outside. Fucking all types of shit. Brittany Griner's free. Shout out to her. And there's a lot of people outraged about that. It's like, I don't get the shit. It's not like she controlled what happened. You know what I mean? The United States had to do some shit. They did what they had to do. Uh, I think a lot of us look at and blame politicians where I strongly believe that these politicians don't know the first half of what actually is going the fuck on out here. All right, there's a lot more shit that we don't know that is, you know, high-level clearance information that we will probably never get to, you know? So let's just be a little bit more compassionate towards each other and know that we don't know shit. You don't know anything, okay? So just understand that your opinion, while valid, is your opinion, or unvalid. Some people have fucking really unvalid opinions. Uh, and there's no need to kill each other because of it or ourselves. All right. So if I could leave you with one fucking gem of knowledge here on fucking Sucio Talk. Um, and as I get back into doing the show, because I know I haven't done it in a while, uh, and somebody actually asked me the other day if uh, if I was dropping a Christmas episode. Unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, and I've been struggling with that because I don't, I don't just want to be another YouTuber. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want my job description to be like, oh, he's a YouTuber. Yo, podcast host is one thing. I don't know about social media influencer. You know, every day, oh, you got to post this. You got to post this. You got to be on the reels. You know, and I want to play the game. I'll play the game my way. You know, I'm not out here trying to be known for social media. Um, I'm out here trying to be known for my fucking, my mental. Entertaining you guys, being funny. I feel like over the last few episodes, the podcast has lost its humor. And that is the most important part of this. So when I think about what's next for the show, we're going live. 
Uh, we're starting on Monday. Off the success of that, I I will probably do Mondays and Fridays. I'm trying to understand what it's going to be like to do the show when I'm not here in the studio. What does the lighting look like? Do I need another camera? Do I need two more cameras? What the fuck do I need? So I'm going to be doing the research on that to make sure that I can bring you guys an amazing experience and we can all unite together, right, and talk, real talk, sucio talk, about what it is in the industry that needs to change, uh, what it is in the industry that needs to stay, needs to remain, uh, and also wish your boy luck because I signed up for James Beard. All right, I entered the show into James Beard. So if anybody you know out there, you know anybody out there who works at James Beard or has a, a little bit of pull, you know what I mean? Get your boy on the list. All right, I'm trying to host James Beard. I'm trying to host Michelin parties. I know I'm a host, baby. I know I can do this shit. So I don't know what my future holds, but I do know that I will work hard to achieve whatever that may be. So for the last two years since I've been out of the restaurant, I've been a little lost. Like, what the fuck's going on? What am I going to do? And I've decided that I need to get back in the kitchen. So here I am telling you, gun for hire out here, not trying to be in the private realm anymore. I'm trying to go out there and make a name for myself at a restaurant all while growing this podcast and being a baller, motherfucking successful person who pushes the next generation of young professionals to be great. All right? With that, thank you so much for your birthday wishes, uh, Christmas wishes, uh, New Year's resolutions out there. Whatever you're doing while you listen to this show, fucking do it harder, work out harder, run harder, cook harder, preserve shit harder. <laughs> uh, and until next time, I'll see you. That's going to be Monday. Let me check the date on that real quick. Monday, Monday the 2nd. All right, on Monday the 2nd, we're going live late, 10 p.m. So for you uh, East Coasters out there, it's going to be one, right when you're getting out of work. You know what I mean? You're eating your late night shitty food, shitty fast food. That's when I come in, get to hang out. Uh, chefs, I implore you, Monday the 2nd of January, 10 p.m. PST. Pacific time. Check your boy out. Sucio Talk is live. Uh, and also working on live shows like out there where you can go buy a ticket, hang out with the chefs. Let's see if I too can sell out Madison Square Garden. There was a podcast recently that just did that, and they, they talk about finance. But I think that is possible. All right? So with that said, peace. Solo Sucio, episode 103. SucioTalk.com and also the number to the hotline. You could leave funny cook stories, restaurant recommendations, whatever you want. Get featured on the show. I might even play the recording. That's 510-463-1145. 510-463-1145. Peace out. Sucio Talk.